Hey guys, Render New Productions, and welcome to another Java tutorial. In this tutorial, I will be talking about how to use enumerations in order to make variable tracking easy and um, actually keep track of uh, user input uh, with ease. Now, uh, enumerations are actually sort of a widespread programming phenomenon, and all they really are are variables with set values that allow you to actually keep track of, um, of the user's input. So, for example, if you have a menu, you're going to need an enumerated variable to keep track of menu option 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. Uh, enumerations are also a lot of times used to keep track of uh, static sounds or final final sound files, but you'll see what enumerations are exactly in a second. So the first thing we're actually going to do is we're going to design an application in which the user has to um, select menu input from a, or select a number from an actual menu, and then depending on what number they select, a certain output is actually going to occur. So I have this class here called application tester thing, and I'm actually going to first make the main method here. So public static void main, and we're going to send in string args as the parameter here. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm actually going to um, ask the user what they want to do. Uh, in, well, actually, I'm going to display the menu. So in the menu, I'm just going to have system dot out dot print line. Um, so I'm going to print. So this menu is going to have several options. So it's going to have option one of print the current year, year, um, and then we're going to create a new line with backslash n, and then I'm just going to go ahead and press enter to keep our programming actually synonymous with um, with with um, sorry with the actual output. So now I'm going to say option number two is print, um, I don't know what, print the programming language this is made in. So then I'm going to make a new line, of course, and uh, delete this quotation here. And Eclipse will automatically fill in the plus and the, uh, the extra quotation that's actually needed. Um, so then I'm going to add option number three, which is, let's just say, print the first few integers or digits of pi. And uh, once again, I'm going to enter a new line here. And then the last and final option is going to be um, print the first few terms of the Fibonacci sequence. Okay, so here we've got our print line uh, statement. So, oops, we forgot a semicolon. Um, so here what we're actually doing is we're designing a menu. So if we actually run this application, um, and I actually drag the output into a more viewable area here, you know what I'm going to do? Yeah, this will work. So now, I can minimize this. Make this over here. Okay. So now we've got the output right next to our code, which is always nice. Um, but so as you can see, it says print the current year, print the programming language this is made in, print the first few digits of pi, and print the first few terms of the Fibonacci sequence. So the next thing we need to do is actually get the user's input on what uh, what option they're actually going to choose. So in order to do that, we're going to need an object to actually create or, or get the user's input. So we're going to use a scanner object for this. If you don't know how to use a scanner object, I'm going to do a quick one down right here. So the first thing you need to do is actually import the scanner class. So we're going to say import import java.util.scanner. And um, after that's actually imported, I'm just going to create a new private variable inside the class that will read all of the input. So I'm going to say um, static scanner input and equal to new scanner and the stream that it's going to go ahead and read is system.in which is actually the system's input. So after this menu is actually printed we are going to say int option equal to um, input dot next int. So this is going to be this integer 
variable called option is actually going to store the number that the user inputs. So um, they're going to either insert one, two, three, or four. So the first thing we are we're actually going to do is uh, well, actually, now that we're created our menu and we're actually getting the the user's uh, choice here, we can actually go ahead and start with our enumerations. So en enumerations are basically variables to keep track of certain things. So the uh, the programmer doesn't have to keep track of what variables represent what uh, menu option and so forth. So we do not actually want to keep track of that uh, menu option 1 is print the current year. So when the user types 1, we don't want to have to memorize that so we're going to have to print the current year. So we let enumeration do that for us. So what we're actually going to do is we're going to create a class inside of this class, um, or a class inside of this file. It's going to be called public class enumerations. And um, what have we got here? Oh, we just we can't type public. We just need to type class. So we're creating a new class called enumerations. And since this class is actually inside this file, it's only going to be able to be accessed by this class right here, this application tester thing. So this is one of the more advanced features of Java, how you can actually embed a class within a class's file. Um, but there's really no need to actually know how this works. So all of this this uh, this class enumerations is going to do is actually contain the values of the variables and the menu items they represent. So we're going to create four variables here and we're going to say public so public static integer and this integer well actually public static final integer and um, and this integer is going to be called print current year and we're just going to put it all in capitals and this is going to equal one since that is what the menu option here. So we're going to do the same thing with uh, the other options. So public static final int print programming language equal to 2. Public static final int print pi. Um, and this is going to be equal to 3. And then public static final int print fib for Fibonacci sequence. And that's going to equal 4. So now that we've got our um, these variables set up, we can actually use them within our main class. Now right now you may be a little confused because we just created this whole different class with a whole bunch of different variables in it. However, let's go over uh, the modifiers that are actually on these variables. So we have this class enumerations, and all it's going to do is be accessed by our class right here. So that's nothing, nothing new. However, we're creating all these variables. Each one is public, which means that it can be accessed by classes outside of this enumerations class, which is exactly what we need. We also want the variables to be static, which means that we do not need to create a new instance or a new object of the enumerations class in order to access these variables. This final tag here just makes just lets Java know that the val this value of uh, the variable cannot and will not be changed. And then this int, of course, is declaring that this is an integer. And then we are just declaring um, the name of the variable here, print current year, all in capitals um, because you know, that's just standard Java style. If you have a final variable, you should print it all in capitals. So now we can actually go ahead and look back into our main um, main method here, and we can actually analyze the uh, user's input. So we can actually use a switch statement here. So we're going to say switch. No, I'm just going to use if else if because I'm more familiar with that. So I'm going to say if option equals equals, and um, now. I'm going to go ahead and jump down to our enumerations class. So if option equals enumerations, enumerations dot print current year, year, then we are going to print the current year. So we're going to system dot out dot print line, and this is going to be 2012. However, else if, so right now we're just doing a cascading is if else if statements. So um, right here, we opened up the if statement and um, we closed it. Now, the reason that we're able to do enumerations.printCustomYear here is because we actually set it up inside this class. So the value of enumerations.printCurrentYear uh, right here is actually equal to 1, which, as we can see, corresponds with the menu item, print the current year. So when actually creating this if statement, we did not need to know the value of, uh, of the actual menu option that the user enters. Now all we needed to know that it prints the current year. So we're also going to say else if the option equals uh, enumerations 
dot. So now we can actually um, view because of um, Eclipse's little pop-up here. So if you were like a newcomer to the project and you didn't know what the menu options were because and you couldn't find them in the code because let's just say it's super big convoluted code, you can actually just press enumerations dot and then you learn all the functions. So now we can do print programming language. So print else if option equals print programming language, we're going to print Java. So we're going to system dot out dot print line and we're just going to print Java. Um, now we can do else if option equals enumerations dot. Now we don't even have to do this in order. So the next thing we can do is actually the Fibonacci sequence. So enumerations dot print fib. And we're actually going to now print the first few digits of the Fibonacci sequence. So if you are familiar with the Fibonacci sequence, the first couple of terms are 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. So let's just go ahead and run with those. Now the Fibonacci sequence is just a series in which um, these are the first two terms and then the next term is uh, figured out by adding those two terms together. So 0 plus 1 is 1, 1 plus 1, 2, 2 plus 1, 3, 3 plus 2, 5, 5 plus 3, 8, 8 plus 5, 13, 13 plus 8 is 21. So we're just going to go ahead and print those out. So system.out.println um, 0, 1, 1, 2, 3, 5, 8, 13, 21. Um, so now uh, we can actually go ahead and enter our last option. So else if option equals equals enumerations dot print pi. So we can just open up our else if statement here. And pi, of course, is 3.1415926. And that's all I know. So <laughs> we are going to system dot out dot print line. Um, three, 3.1415926. All right. So now that we actually have our cascading if statements complete, um, we can well we can actually say else um, system dot out dot print line not an option and then we're just going to run main again so let's go ahead and take one more look at our code before we actually test it out in the console here so we actually print out this menu which consists of four options each one delineated by a new line now this was actually tested out previously um, and then we create a option variable that actually keeps track of what the user actually types in. And then we set up an enumerations class which contains clever variable names that are linked to their actual menu option or they're linked to whatever the user is going to type in. So now we don't even have to worry about what the user is going to type in. Now all we have to worry about is what the option actually does. So if option is print current year, then we're going to print the current year. If the option is uh, print programming language, then we're going to print the programming language. So keep in mind that these if statements are properly set up, um, so um, only one of them will actually run at a time. So um, now we've got if options print fib, we're going to print the Fibonacci sequence, and if option is print pi, we're going to print pi. However, else, if um, the option is not one of those uh, specifically enumerated items, then we're just going to print out not an option. And here at the end, um, we recall this main method here, so the code is now just going to jump back up to here. It's going to display the menu again so we can start doing stuff. So let's go ahead and test out this application. So we can just press save and launch here, and um, we can go ahead and jump over to the console. So first thing let's try out is let's try out inserting 5 in a menu. As you can see, it says not an option, and then it spits out the menu again. So let's go ahead and print the, cur the programming language this is made in. So it says Java, and then it spins out the main, the menu again. Uh, print the current year, first few digits of pi, and a Fibonacci sequence. So as you can see, these enumerations work perfectly with what the user actually typed in. Um, so what would happen if the user actually tried to type in the name of one of these enumerated variables, the name of the variable, instead of the actual number? Well, there would be two problems with this. First of all, what we have is a scanner and the scanner actually reads integers. So the input would not actually be detected. And if the user were actually to type in the variable name in a scanner that did accept strings, um, none of these variables actually has the value of that, uh, that string that the user would have typed in. Um, and Java does not like relay variable names with uh, input-output systems. 
So there would be no direct correlation between what the user types in and any sort of variable or class name. So if we went ahead and tried to type in the menu option of print pi, uh, you can see we get a nasty error because we actually tried to send a string into a uh, scanner that only reads integers. So there you have it. That's how to use enumerations in order to keep track of menu options without actually knowing the menu options. It's kind of an ab abstract topic, however it makes organization in huge programs very nice. So thanks for watching this Java tutorial. Hopefully it taught you something, as when I learned enumerations I was able to do so much more. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe, and thanks a lot for watching this video. Have a fantastic day, guys. Peace.